All right, is my voice coming, guys? I hope I'm heard. I'm, I apologize that my internet is not working. And it worked only with this uh, account, which is this company. And, uh, you know, uh, they, this is, uh, they give me only three hours, a uh, few, in order to be, uh, like, to have full time, I have to pay. And it's not the money. The, the, the problem is giving my information out. This is the issue. Uh, anyway, uh, a Muslim, he posted something in my previous video. Uh, he's a smart Muslim, as all the Muslims are, you know, as you know. And, uh, you know, for me, I really always learn from them. We have to be honest. Each time a Muslim he speaks, you learn a lot. Uh, so let us see what this Muslim he said. I hope you like this image uh, in the screen. Uh, this Muslim, he is uh, trying to get me busted, you know. Uh, he said, and he said that he learned a lot from me, and he, I string him to be as a Muslim so he gets stronger. Okay. So he said, E, Christian Prince, E, okay. Wallahi, you know, in the Middle East, don't say Wallahi. Don't, don't say that. They will grab you and they will think you are one of those, uh, you know, <laughs> don't say Wallahi. <laughs> don't say, tr trust me, it's not a good thing. You always strengthen me, in which you always defeat against Islam. Wallahi. Oh boy. Okay, wallahi what? Wallahi, look here yourself. In the hadith sahih noted, the hour will not come until the word of Allah is no longer spoken. <laughs> so this is, this is stringing you more. <laughs> so he's trying to say to me, it's not you who's making Muslims leave Islam and forget about Islam. No, this is Allah, Allah, brother. This is Allah. <laughs> you know, one Muslim, he says to us, Islam will dominate the world. And the other Muslim, he give us a, a prophecy. So either you are a liar or Muhammad is a liar. Which one of you? The brother, Islam is spreading. Islam is, if, if Islam is really spreading, that's why Muhammad is a liar. And you see, this is your post, not my post. Now, this is not really what, you know, the topic will be about the end of Islam, but there's something more to share. I'm not going to make the video long because this is a very long topic. I can share endless uh, stories from Muhammad about this madness. Uh, but uh, just because he, uh, you know, he posted this, I said to myself, let me give those Christians who, who did not see me for a long time some snack for the morning. Because when the last time you see me? I mean, I'm not since yesterday. Oh no, we did not pass yesterday yet. It's 11:57 here. I cannot say since yesterday. Since today, since two hours ago. Anyway, so uh, let us see what Muhammad he said about the judgment day. And here you see that Muhammad truly is a prophet. And actually, there's something I like about the end of the time. I, I, will, I will show you. Please, uh, you know, you see Muhammad the hijab. He said. Did the brother see how a Christian prince he is harassing a Muslim woman? Uh, let, let me explain to you, brother. This is your prophet. <clears throat> Saying, brother, that in the judgment day, before the hour come, every one man will have 50 women. If, 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 if. I mean, look how unlucky I am. Why this judgment day is not now? So now I have to live for how long until the number of women will be 50 to 1? 50 to 1? I mean, are you sure? Brother, women will increase in number. And men will decrease in number so much. Oh man, I cannot wait for that day. So much, so 50 women will be looked for after one man. My friend, trust me, I have a lot of Muslim women. They are texting me and etc. You see, ask Muhammad Hijab, more than 50, what 50? I mean, why I am born in the wrong time? I mean, why my dad and my mom did not meet like 2,000 or 3,000? Like, you know, it may be like a... a uh, 20 years before the judgment day 50 to 1 I mean and why 50 to 1 Muhammad I mean why you don't make it 72 to 1 hmm? do we have any Muslim agree with this <clears throat>
Hmm? Yeah, don't worry. You can they can cut my videos. Who cares? We have the, we have the original videos, and people are laughing. And do you see, like you know, uh, you see they they think if they make those things, uh, you know, they can make me have a bad reputation. Uh, do your best. First of all, you know. When, when they make a claim, all of us, we knew the claim is because of what? Because a Christian prince is hurting Islam. As simple as that. It's otherwise, you know, but the more you hurt them, the more you hit in a sensitive area, the more they will try to, you know, to do their best. And this is their standard. But now, focus with me. Forget about the Mimi and Mumu and Shushu and Sisi. All right? Let them do their business. We do our business. We focus in the head of the snake, Muhammad. Not Mimi Hijab. This guy is just uh, doing business. Each time he go in video, he holds something in his hand. Buy it, brother. It's very healthy. <laughs> I should do that too, by the way. <laughs> I mean, what kind of dawa? What kind of a missionary? Oh, brother, buy this thing. It's very healthy, brother. Trust me, the link is underneath. Hit it, brother. Hit it. Why you don't sell shoes and socks and panties and underwear and bra? Anyway, we go back to the business. Women will increase in number, but look what Muhammad said. Religious knowledge will decrease by the death of a religious learned man. If, 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 if. Okay, religious ignorance will prevail. Are you talking about <laughs> are you talking about those guys in YouTube who try to defend Islam? <laughs> And you guys, you say Muhammad is not a prophet. How he knew? If Muhammad is not a prophet, how you knew that those ignorance, they have no idea how to answer us. If Muhammad is a false prophet, you tell me. Here we go. You have to believe now. And then there will be a prevalence of open, illegal, sexual intercourse. Supposedly Islam promote legal sexual intercourse. I mean, Islam is, is the most open, sexual intercourse in the world for four wives at the same time which mean multi you know multi partners one rooster for chickens excuse my language and you are talking about open this is open and then muta and then divorce every day and divorce by three words or one more word and then if she divorced she have to go and sleep with the new man so islam is the religion of uh, but anyway this is what muhammad said and here he says women will increase in number now men men in the chat be honest with me are you in favor of the increase of number of women <laughs> listen listen imagine your name your name is uh, uh, Ahmed a brother and you go to a dating website in one second a brother do you know how many messages you will receive at least at least 50 women 50 uh, by the way if it's 49 it's mean the prophet is lying you have to get 50. all right o only 50 uh, which make me very sad i mean you know 50 they can't even make enough sandwiches for me do you know how much i eat by the way uh, i eat once a day just to let you know once every 24 hours uh, 50 50 uh, uh, Muslims uh, uh, record my video I will say panty and you can cut it and put it somewhere F I need to buy them 50 panties and 50 bra and 50 <laughs> skirt 50 shoes you know what Muhammad I don't want the women I want to stay single leave me alone one woman will drive you crazy will make you go bankrupt so 50 women, all of them, they want to buy lipstick, eyeliner, per perfume. Oh, my God, good perfume. You know, you, you go to the bedroom, you find like a, a long line of shoes and and shoes and the floor. Like if everyone alone, she have 50, that's mean she, we have 50. We have 100 pair of shoes. I mean, there is no, no, I mean, the room will be blocked with shoes. Only 50. Why you don't like women? Who said I don't like women? <laughs> Who told you that? <laughs> no, my friend, but I don't like to have 100 shoe in my bedroom. <laughs> but this is not really still 
Muhammad he said something more crazy. You see, I've tried to keep the uh, video short, but you know, Christian Prince, uh, sh short video of Christian Prince is like a long movie. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and you know, like imagine you are going to do shopping with 50 wives. Oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> well, you will be the donkey, literally. They buy you carry you, because you are the man. I mean, you are the man, and they are the shoppers, and they are the ladies. They need a donkey. So what Muhammad is predicting that every fifty women they will have one donkey. And now, uh, not only this. I mean, when they go to the bedroom, what will happen? <laughs> Beep! Don't talk about it. You know, fifty and one guy. I mean, I mean, are you sure? Don't you think you're exaggerating too much, Muhammad? Fifty and one guy. What about making them like twenty-five? <laughs> Anyway, but this is not what Muhammad uh, really, uh, that's the, I mean, this is just one of the things Muhammad he said. Let us see something. Muhammad, he said that Islam start as a very strange religion, which means little, few only. Uh, you know, when you say strange, uh, like you are a stranger. Why? Because only few from your kind. So if you go to an area like uh, as me, if I go to Indonesia, I will be the only one in Indonesia because everyone in Indonesia is an Arab, as you know. Well, honestly, go to Indonesia. You see, my name is Muhammad. My name is Ahmed Saud Sawuni. Okay, why you you are Indonesian? Why you are calling yourself with a with Arab name? So if I go there, I will be the only Indonesian, and they will be the the, the, the whole country is uh, is Arab. Alhamdulillah. Anyway, so Islam starts as something strange, which means a few, and then will end as something strange. Why? Because a few will stay believing Islam. That's a good prophecy. I like it. But Muhammad he said something more crazy too. We are not done look at this I don't know if I should show you this should I show you guys and look at the uh, look at the title of the <coughs> clothing kitab al libas there is a there is a book it's called the book of a clothing chapter of panty chapter of a bra <laughs> The, okay, uh, what this had hadith have to do with the book of panties and uh, clothing? I mean, you tell me. I mean, why this is? Why even this hadith is? Uh, because the prophet he spoke about clothing. Look what he said. Abu Amir, he said, "How how are you, Abu Amir? Abu Amir, I really, really, I want to say hi to you and your fifty wives in the future. I swear, but don't swear, Abu Amir." I mean, the second, a second when a, a, a companion of the prophet or the prophet he swear it means something fishy is going to happen. I swear by Allah, another oath, another oath. One is not enough. No, that he did not believe me. That he heard messenger of Allah say, they will be among my community, people who will make lawful of the use of al khaz and the silk. This is like a kind of a fabric. And some of them will be transformed into pigs and monkeys. Like what? What? Because you did this, Allah will make you a pig and a monkey, brother. I mean, I find that the prophecy of Prophet Muhammad is beyond imagination. You see, if you rape women, he don't make you a pig. Hmm? If you rape women, he will not make you a pig. But if you wear this clothing, because it's haram, Allah will make you a pig and a monkey. So before the, the before the judgment day, some Muslims will start wearing those clothing and Allah will make them pigs my friend there's a lot of Muslims already they are wearing those clothing they are even wearing jeans not only this and short skirt why Allah don't make them pigs and monkeys hello yeah uh, princess you cannot join the class sorry you are late guys anyone you enter the class late you know you bring your daddy next time and uh, you know you have to sign and an, uh, disclaimer that you will you promise you know, because what if Allah now? What if the Prophet he said anyone enter the class, Allah will make him a pig and a monkey? What will happen? Do you want that? 
I mean, seriously, do you want that? The Prophet, he is very famous by making those threat. As an example, Muhammad, once, once upon the time, the Prophet was talking. And when the Prophet, he talked, he do poo poo. Look what he said. That <clears throat> the Prophet said, not me, speaking to the Muslims, not, not to us, so don't be offended, please. The Prophet said, isn't he who raised his head before the Imam afraid that Allah may transform his head into the donkey? I mean, look at this God. You wear silk, he make you a pig and monkey before the judgment day. You raise your head before the Imam, he make you a donkey. I mean, what's wrong with this God? Are you stuck with those animals? Pig and a donkey and the... Uh, uh, a monkey Allah the transformer exactly we should make a video called Allah the transformer do we have any Muslim who don't agree with me and that explain you know when I saw those guys in the video in the other day debating me <laughs> I was not debating <laughs> I saw a bunch of heads there what is this how those people dictate you can take this man seriously? Obviously, he's making fun of you. And did you? And why the Muslims? And you see, this is this is authentic. This is not just a joke. So why the Muslims don't ask themselves? Okay, you know, there is no way a human being. He is a Muslim. He pray all his life. He will not lift his head before the Imam. It's impossible, because what lift your head mean? You see, when you pray, you are praying behind somebody. So you will not be able to see unless you lift your head. So how you will know that he left his head up? And okay, let us try it. Try it. Let us see what's going to happen. Actually, there's many videos in YouTube. You can see Muslims when the people, they are praying. Some people, their head is up. Nobody. His head became a head of a donkey. So the prediction of Muhammad about the end of Islam, I find it is very astonishing. Muhammad is saying Islam will disappear and nobody will practice Islam no more and actually there's more and more hadith you know we can maybe in different time and now it's late uh, we can uh, you know go in more details maybe I maybe I should make a book about the end of time in Islam you know what I mean So, so we can get more uh, like uh, extra in depth information. <clears throat> this is because I have a Christian friend who think maybe Muhammad meant well in the beginning, but then got corrupt later. No, my friend, Muhammad is a very corrupt man. He is the corruption himself. You cannot corrupt the corrupt. I mean, what, what do you want from anyone? How to prove that somebody is corrupt? Very easy. If you want all those who listen to him and believe him to sleep with him. It's very, you see, all cult leaders, they share two things. They want your money and sleep with your women. Correct? What Jesus said, from their fruits, you shall know them. You do not need, listen to me, I might talk something and do something else. So, uh, the fruits is a fruit of corrupt man corrupt to the bones this guy his blood is corrupt if we compare between any of the disciples of jesus and may, may the lord forgive me for comparing between those holy men i can call him holy as decent you know i don't mean holy like god so and muhammad behavior this we cannot compare so how you can say such a thing all right so don't make them fool you but anyway uh, all those prediction of Muhammad they lead to one end that Islam will disappear and Muslim will disappear and even some of them according to Muhammad as you see they will turn into pigs and monkeys now uh, they turn into pigs or monkeys uh, uh, you know not only it's a stupid if you are a Muslim, if I'm a Muslim, I'm listening to this. And as you see, this is Sahih. So you cannot say to me, this is, uh, you know, this is your Muslim saying it's a Sahih. 
if I'm a Muslim, I'm listening to this. A prophet, he said that people who wear silk, Allah will transform them into apes and the swine. Shouldn't I ask myself, why Allah don't transform killers? I mean, which one is more ugly? Wearing silk? Or raping a child? Which one is more ugly? Wearing jeans or raping a woman? Killing a person or wearing a silk dress or t-shirt? So the logic here is missing and it's a stupid logic. Not only obviously it's a false prophecy because if you believe in this, this means you believe the same as the Hindu, you know, like you will be transformed from a stage to a stage deed based based on your deeds correct this is a hindu this is a hindu belief so muhammad obviously is carrying from hinduism and maybe maybe should tomorrow we make a video about this again to talk about the transformation reincarnation exactly based on your deeds so if you were a good person you will be etc if you were a bad person you will be etc and this is what the what Muhammad is saying to us. Correct? I'm not I'm not adding things up. This is exactly what Muhammad is teaching us. All right? Any Muslim have a comment? <clears throat> Anyone? Do we have any Muslim want to say something? Uh, going to fist each other in a ring? Yeah, I mean, my friend, uh, this is this is a city talk. <clears throat> and uh, we better ask Musa and Musa to join because Musa he did the uh, hit the angel Jibril and uh, the angel Azrael and he he took his eye out. <laughs> I mean. Uh, uh, look how silly this is, stupid uh, hijab. He go to a guy says you want to fight with me. I mean, this is stupid talk. Man. You love silk, princess. Is that the name of the guy you want to marry, or this is the clothing? <clears throat> Do we have any Muslim want to say anything? Any anything use, useful, additional to violence? Do you dare to fight Muhammad hijab? No, my friend, I don't dare. Uh, let me tell you why. I fight with Allah and I smash him. I fight with Muhammad, I barbecue him. So who is Mimi Hijab? I am this guy. He should just ring the bell. Each time I finish spanking to Muhammad Hijab, he ring the bell, he says, Naked, second round. We are not kids, my friend. This is stupid talk. This is this is the this is talk of savage people. You are savage like your prophet. And the one usually who speak about fighting is the coward one. Trust me. We are no coward. But we would we don't seek violence and we are we don't we don't sponsor violence. But if somebody wanna play games with us, he will he will get what he deserves. Trinity is Hindu. Why, my friend, the Trinity is Hindu? What does that mean? Trinity is Hindu. Hmm. You can say whatever you want. Repeat it again, post, post. Trinity is Hindu. Trinity, Trinity is Hindu. I mean, it's very silly. Why? Do you believe in three gods in Hinduism? Or you believe in one God? We Christian, we believe in one God. That's what Trinity is. So it's very silly and stupid of you to say Trinity is Hindu. Because Trinity is worshipping one God. Yeah, but this is, you see, those are gods in Christianity. We don't have the three gods. Secondly, one of them that like Vishnu, the one you are talking about, Vishnu, is the water, right? What is that? I mean, silly. This is about material. This is not about uh, spiritual. And uh, and the Hinduism believe in many, many, many gods, not one god. There's a three, uh, three, uh, maybe three major names, but you have tons of gods. 
Vishnu is not the water. I forgot. I did not read about Hinduism for a long time. I mean, I made a video of, uh, a few weeks ago, but you know, I really forgot. But Vishnu supposedly is the one in the middle. Uh, I'm not sure. Hindu, they believe in one God. Oh, okay. Well, my friend, you can say whatever you want, as you wish. First of all, when somebody he say that Christianity believe in Hinduism, then we should you should believe in the same names of the same gods. Secondly, we believe only in one God. And me myself, I never heard of a Hindu believe in one God. I don't know where you get this from. Since when? And who? What is the name of your God? The one you believe in Him as one God? Can you give me His name? As I know, there's tons of gods. So what are you talking about? You are just making uh, lies. Anyway, you can you can say whatever you want. Um, yeah. Yeah, he's just uh, he's just trying to uh, take us away from our topic. Uh, anyway, you can say whatever you want, my friend. And uh, okay, Daniel, do you like to call me? I'm willing to do this, Daniel. I will open a Hindu website and I will get you busted, and everybody will laugh at you. Do you want to do that? I have no knowledge in Hinduism, almost zero. I will open a Hindu website and they will laugh at you. You are just coming here to disturb us and to fabricate things. Do you want to call me, Mr. Daniel? Right now, live on air. I will do nothing. I will open a Hindu website and we will read what they believe. And then everybody will laugh at you. Are you there? Anyway. You will call me tomorrow. Okay, you will break your shake. Okay, go and shake your shake yourself now and then come tomorrow. You are here just, you are an idiot. You are, you are an uh, whatever. We'll give you some attention. You see, I saw many, like uh, some they say, uh, Christianity is a stealing, uh, is, a, is coming from a Krishna. But if you read the story of a Krishna, you see nothing to do with, you know, Krishna. <laughs> you have many, uh, there's many brothers. And his mother, and they say he was a son of a virgin. Krishna is a son of a virgin, you, 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 you idiot. I mean, they fabricate lies and they go and read it in Google. People, they can search in two seconds. Anyway, we love. Any Muslim want to say to us, why Allah is the reincarnation of God based on your deeds? Is that a Hinduism stealing ideas? The Quran even speaking about Allah punishing the Jews for fishing in Saturday. Fishing what? In Saturday. Right? Uh, where is your the donation? Christian Prince, stop caring about you, apparently. Hey, my friend, you are an idiot. In this in YouTube, there's no donation. And don't, don't come here, Mr. Prince. You are just a stupid idiot. And, and my friend, uh, my donation is 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 wonderful. The Lord is my provider, and don't worry. You see, as you say, there's no donation, and Christian Prince is here, correct? So donation, there's no donation. Christian Prince come online, and this is a proof that you are a donkey, and Christian Prince is the man. All my life, I work without donation. The new donation is something you know we we, we accept a few years ago. <clears throat> All my life, not even as not even a penny. So this is a stupid of you, and this is proof that I am the man. Donation, no donation, it doesn't matter. The Lord is my provider, and the truth will be spoken. <laughs> and look what they are busy. They are busy about Christian Prince. They are not busy about the stupidity we have in front of us at the screen. Christian Prince, where is your donation? Why you worry about my donation? And look what you will do now. The, the Christian, they will go and make donation because of your statement. Why you do that? Why? 
You see, Mimi Hijab, each time he go in the mic, please, brother, don't forget there's 100,000 Muslim leaving Islam a day every year. Please donate for us. A Christian Prince, he go online. He close online. He don't say send donation. When the last time, guys, you heard me saying, donate for me. I don't speak about it. It is your worry, not my worry. Because you are fake like your prophet. And the Christians, they donate to me, my friend. They do. <clears throat> yeah, we never beg for money. The Lord, he is our provider. And the good ones, they help us when it's time. And I don't ask for it. You know, like, uh, uh, let us say... <clears throat> I'm not saying it's wrong to ask if you have needs, right? Like just a few hours ago, uh, two hours ago, somebody he says uh, the help Christian Prince, you need to buy a new equipment. Uh, no, it's, I don't have, I do not need a, a new equipment. My computer is fine. Uh, it's just internet, and we have a lot of snow and etc. All right. Uh, <clears throat> Can you talk about Sikh knowledge even if you have to go to China? This is a fake hadith, my friend. It's not exist. It, the Muslim who says to you, this hadith, uh, Muhammad, he said that, tell him to show us the hadith. Here we go. I'm here. Who is the Muslim want to show us the hadith, Sikh, Sikh, Sikh knowledge even in China? <laughs> you know, let me tell you what they say in China. They say he left as a donkey. He never came back as a horse. And that would be stupid even to believe in it because if Muhammad himself he never spent two weeks to learn how to read how to write it take him two weeks because he's an Arab <clears throat> you know what I mean when you speak the language and you are born with it will take you two weeks to learn how to write and how to read you do not need two years so the guy who said to them go to China to seek knowledge he did not give his time to two weeks to learn how to write how to read and he's a prophet now challenge them, the one who says that, okay, show us the hadith re uh, reference so we can love. It's not exist. <clears throat> it's a fake hadith, fabricated. Why do men only can wear silver but not gold? Well, Muhammad, he killed a man and he took his gold ring. And people they start talking about him because when he said he started looking at it and he, he you know he felt people they start talking about him that this guy is a false prophet so muhammad to uh, correct his image he says that a golden ring should not be wear it will take you away from god let me try to find you the hadith uh, All right. Let us see if we can find the hadith. <clears throat> Muhammad always, you know, when he when people they start getting him busted. And uh, he tried to correct his image. Like as an example, when he wanted to have uh, uh, sex with his own daughter-in-law, uh, he fabricated the verse. He says, you know, he do things to correct his 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 image, claiming that God is the one who said that, not him. All right. Uh, <clears throat> right let's see. I'm trying to find it. <clears throat> but look at the Muslims, how they try. I mean, supposedly, uh, he, this guy, he's saying, Christian Prince, you see, uh, Christians, they stop donating for you. you eat it. There's no donation option here, you donkey. Do you see an option? <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, and the funny Muhammad, he forbid those things, but in heaven he will wear them. In the heaven, Allah, he promised them even bracelet from gold and silver for the men and the women. <clears throat> Yeah, here there is a hadith speaking about Muhammad. He received a gift. He did not steal it. Uh, let us see. Let us see this hadith here. Mm. Yeah, I'm trying to find it is anyway. This is not of our topic, but maybe you know it's good to find it. Uh, Let us see. Yeah, I see here he is wearing a, a, a ring uh, from silver. Support, but anyway, silver isn't it? Isn't it uh, uh, like an expensive uh, uh, material? Why are you are wearing a ring anyway? If you are, a, you know, a, a person who don't want to show off, or what? What the ring is for? Uh, let's see. Yeah, here we go. Uh, uh, the prophet started to wear a gold ring. Do you see it? But this is not the hadith I want, really. But anyway, this is a clo close to the one. So the hadith here is saying, and this is Sahih. The prophet started to wear a gold ring, and the people start to wear gold ring. And the Messenger of Allah said, I was wearing this ring, but I will never wear it again. <laughs> okay, why? Do you see it? A madman. He have a he have a mental issue. Because if the ring was bad from the beginning, I mean it was bad in the beginning, it was bad bad after. So why he wear it in the beginning and later he don't wear it? Or what does this have to do with God? Stupidity! This guy, he is obviously Muhammad is mentally ill. Muhammad is mentally ill, but there is a hadith. I'm trying to find it, where he, you know, he claimed that this golden ring he he take him away from the people, which means he is busy. He keep looking at the at the golden ring. This hadith I did not read like for a long time, so but it's in here in my head, but I don't remember exactly like word by word, so I can find it. Uh, <clears throat> Oh, look at this one. Even he made one in this hadith here. He made a golden ring by himself. You see, look at this one. Allah Apostle had a gold ring made for himself. And he used to wear it with a stone toward the inner part of his hand. And people, they start doing that. Okay. So if people, they start doing that, you, you know, you stop wearing the ring. So what Muhammad, he want only himself to wear the ring? All those hadith are, you know, is saying the same. Uh, but there is a there is a hadith more funny that this this uh, ring made him busy from Allah and and his followers. Anyway, what you can say? This is Islam. Welcome to the stupidity. Do we have any Muslim want to say anything?
You see, Islam can be can can look out like outside. You see people wearing white clothes, praying five times a day. Uh, this is Islam from outside, but this is the this is the same look as of a graveyard. Yeah, I would take call only if you are a Muslim. Are you a Muslim? If you are a Muslim, I would take your call. No problem. <laughs> so the more you learn about this cult. Salah Ahmed trying to call me. All right, let me open my Skype. I wasn't planning to take calls now because it's really late. But anyway, uh, my four wives in vacation and um, I, sorry, my 50, the prophet, he predict that in the end of the time, there will be each one will have 50 wives. So my 50 wives are playing outside with the snow. All right. Let me open my Skype and see if this guy wanna call. It. All right, my Skype is open. <coughs> oh. Somebody is asking me. He have his family member. He left Islam, but he he want me to help him to leave uh, his uh, his family. Yeah. Where is that guy when I call me? My Skype is open. Anyone? Why you don't become a Muslim and get virgins? Uh, you see, w one of the one of the signs of stupidity. That somebody he made a promise, which is a stupid, and you follow it. Number one, let us say men they like women. It's not a secret. So if the purpose of this promise is to seduce me, the first question I will ask myself, even if I am a person who just wants sex, he don't want anything except this thing. The first question I will ask myself, well when I will have them this guy is saying to me after I die <laughs> so how stupid I am to believe in such a promise and he claimed that this is the holy God promising me not a pimp you see if a pimp he came to me and he says I have 72 women for you I will believe him he's a pimp you know what I mean guys a pimp is more trustworthy to believe in this such a promise because this is a pimp he have a lot of women this is what he do for a living but the prophet of God he promised men a huge number of women and this 50 is the lowest number so how I can believe he is a prophet but he promised me a promise of a pimp do you know what I mean because this is a promise of a pimp a man of God will not make sense. this is embarrassing this is disgusting actually I mean what 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 this uh, what does have to do with God you tell me how this can be about God impossible so we have to use our brain otherwise people will laugh at us garbage in garbage out so not anyone he says to you something you go and you believe it and you know a question why Allah did not promise the women uh, uh, 72 men hmm? why the men the answer is very simple Muhammad is looking for a fighters to die for him and use their stupidity the women they are not the one who will do that correct so due to his need the promises is made and those promises is a fantasy and the fool he believe in the foolishness <clears throat> it is not a moral promise 
not a holy promise, not decent promise. It is a lost. Secondly, even the Muslim, they, they stole the story of Adam and Eve from the Bible. And they believe that God, supposedly, he created Adam and Eve. Okay, how many Adam, how many Eve? One. One Adam, one Eve, correct? All right. So why we need at the end of the time? If this is heaven, God, he created Adam and, and Eve in heaven, according to the Quran. So why he did not create one Adam and 72 Eve? Adam at that time he was sexually uh, suffering from a problem right actually if you think about it that is at that time it is more logical from the end of the time and now if you ask me why I would say okay this is the first man and God want to increase the number of mankind so it's okay maybe to accept the idea that at that time if Islam trying to promote that Allah want to spread uh, mankind in earth to create one man and many women but even at that time when there is only one man there was one woman do you see what I'm saying so always you have to be intelligent smart otherwise people they want to make fun of you What if somebody now come and he promised us one billion uh, women? We will follow him. Here we go, Muhammad saying women will increase in number and men will decrease in number. So much, so 50 women will be looked after one man. And by the way, if you go to China, it's the opposite. Do you know that? In China, they have a problem. They have way more male from females. Go right now and type in Google. All right so we don't want to change topic but always the promises of a person present who is this person if I come to you and I have a videotape in my hand let us say you have a birthday and I come to you and the guy his name Johnny he came to you and the guy his name is Ahmad he came to you I will come to you I bring for you the Bible or let us say I will bring you a pen. Forget about the Bible now. Maybe you have one already. I will bring you a pen. Johnny, he bring you um, uh, a wireless speaker for fun. Ahmad, he bring you a CD of porn. Each one of us, he thought about his gift. And the gift is the thought of the one giving the gift, correct? Do you understand me, guys? Because before I, got, I get the gift for you, I thought about it. And I thought about what I think it is good to be given. Do you understand? So, the gift which Allah, He is, giving us is porn. That means Allah is porn, God. All what He is promising us is sex and sex and sex and there is food. Just for the sex and there is 80,000 little boys around us and they are white and women they are all of them they are called whore we don't even know their names women we never met and each time you have you sleep with them Allah will make them virgins again so how that can be from God and what is the point of making a woman virgin again I mean is that stupid this is stupid this is cheating <laughs> I mean I just slept with her why you want to make a version again? Maybe Allah, he like, he enjoy uh, 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 women uh, get hurt? No, the idea is that those Arab men, they love to sleep with virgins because he, the Arab is a, is a, is a macho man, you know? He, he live a fantasy. He's a Bedouin man. I want to be the first man. You know what I mean? So Muhammad is speaking to the stupid desire of the naive Arab. He's not speaking of God. If you go to the uh, to the Quran, you will see Muhammad. He promised them that in heaven there is no heat. Why? Because they are in the desert. In the heaven of Allah, you will eat a grape. Why? Because in the desert they don't have a grape. The only fruit they have is a palm tree fruit. 
Where is the palm tree fruit in the heaven of Allah? All right. Uh, uh, Allah promising me in heaven a couch. I mean, what kind of heaven promising me a couch? Something fishy or something stupid, silly. What couch? <clears throat> God promising me uh, a bracelet from silver. The funny, even Allah, he contradict himself, you know. One, one, one verse he says, Allah will give you a bracelet from silver. The other verse he says, uh, a bracelet from gold. Now, which one is of them is a true one? And look at this. Here it says, chapter 18, verse number 31. It says that in the heaven they will wear green silk. And they will wear a glow a gold. And they will have couches, because those Arabs they don't have couches. They dream about it. The only one who have couches at what time for them, they are Bedouin. You know, it is what the Persian, the Roman, those who have a, a Rome at that time is the same as Europe today to any of those country. Nothing changed. It's exactly the same. So you will be reclining, brother, in rise a throne. It, it doesn't say thrones. It says in Arabic. Uh, 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 you will be sitting on the Iraq, Iraq, you know, couches. What kind of a promise this promise is? If Muhammad was exist today, he will promise you a big screen TV, unlimited internet, uh, unlimited movies. Uh, I mean, you name it. This is a promise is made for a man in the desert, and those people they are dreaming about this. Who care? You know, I, I don't wear gold. What gold for? For me, if you ask me, for sure this is personal. Maybe some men they like to wear gold. Gold for me, I find it kind of an insulting to me to wear gold. It might be a cross, no problem. Anything else like a ring, etc. I don't, because. If gold will make me a valuable person, I don't want it. Most of people, they wear expensive stuff to show off. Otherwise, wearing gold will not make any difference, really. I mean, what is, what is, so, okay, I'm, I wear a gold and before gold, what happened? After and before, nothing. And if I wear a green silk uh, T-shirt, okay, and what does that mean? First, I hate the color of green. I like a green grass, trees, yeah, but clothes and green, that's for me, it's really stupid, especially for a man. I will never wear something green. And now we go to heaven and we spend all our life wearing one t shirt for eternity. All of us will be green. Why are, you, are we in the surgery room? Everybody will be wearing a green. How boring. Guys, just forget about this guy. I will, I will, I will close my Skype. Those are kids. They don't want anyone to call. He can call. <clears throat> you, you know what I mean? Imagine you go to, uh, to a heaven, supposedly, and what you see in this heaven, people are wearing a green non-stop for eternity. Let us see. If we go to the hospital and see the doctors, yeah, some doctors now they are wearing a, a blue. They change the colors from. At least a blue is a wear nicer than a green. I mean, what a green! So this is what we will be wearing for eternity. The green. Oh, I apologize, sorry. This is what we'll be wearing.
for eternity green oh you know the first one will sue Allah is is the, the women because those clothes by the way they will never be ruined they will never be wrinkled and they will never get dirty so you will wear it forever there's no you will not even take it off what is this but the reason for the, the color clear think about it why guys why Allah he, he promised the color green anyone can think about it let's see who of you can help me why he promised a green clothing anyone can help why why he promised a green what about yellow why green the grass color exactly but why because those are Bedouin when they see the grass it's life for them when there's no grass their animal die right it's a desert so look what happened right now as we speak a European man he go to the desert to take selfie because he never saw a desert before he is happy he want to sit in the Sun the desert boy he hated the desert he want to go and see green so because they are desert people he is promising them what desert people need rivers rivers do you want rivers they don't have rivers they have a problem with water they wish to have gold and they like to drink and have sex this is the Arabian Peninsula Muhammad is a person who created the menu fit with the Arabian mentality right so always when you uh, when, when you read something try to think about it the reasoning what is the reasoning you know always there is a reason be behind behind any story you can see in front of you the reason is very simple those are Arab and Arab they there's things they like as an example the Arab they like horses right Arab they like horses Allah in the Quran says that I, I made for you that you like horses Do you see it? This is what the Arab like. Because they live in the desert. Camels are not beautiful. Horses are very beautiful. And it saved them in war. It's like saying in this time, I have Ferrari and you have uh, Hyundai. You know what I mean? So there's, there's the one who have money, he have a donkey. The one, I mean, the, who don't have money. He have a donkey the one who is rich he he have a nice horses and he have a nice women's beautiful women's money gold silver horses you know and they are branded horses All right so always always the promises is made for a reason and those reasons are funny and silly right yeah uh, mr. Aridawa first don't use a fake name secondly go and take your kid and play games with him we don't have place here for for kids the one who want to refute me he can call me and you are the same guy you're trying to promote yourself He go on my channel he mentioned his name so people they can watch his video nobody is watching your video you're just a kid stupid kid if you want to watch my videos you need to do what uh, Mimi hijab does <laughs> 
You see, just in less than uh, uh, 48 hours, we destroy all the claim that they have a guy who can debate us. When the lion came, the cats ran away. They are lions when I am not there. The second I appear, they don't want me to talk. They mute me, they hang up on me, and they run. And they became the joke of everybody. This is who we are, and this is who you are. I open my Skype, I say, okay, who want to call me? <clears throat> uh, uh, Salah, you see, if you are coming here to call names, I will not talk to you, but if you want to talk to me, no problem. I will open my Skype, give me your Skype ID. Saleh, Mr. Saleh, speak nicely. I will be happy to talk to you. What is your Skype ID, your friend, my friend? You are a hero. You are the one. Is I'm scared. Give me your Skype ID. I will no, no. Call, no, give me your Skype. Don't, don't apologize. No, I want you to call me and get me busted. Okay, I'm listening to you. What is your Skype? I will call you myself. Don't call me. I will, I will find your name. I give you. I give it to you. Your mood. What mood? Give it to me now. Give it again. I didn't say anything. I mean, does it hurt to give it again? I did not see it. No, no, give it to me. Give it to me. Hello? Hey, you see, you are just a, you are just a potato. You give it to my boy. I don't have a boy here. Those are my brothers and sisters. And the shoe of one of them is better than your God. Get out of here. You brought an insult to your God. You are coming here to insult the Christians. Well, we will return it to you in the in the best way. Why well, you think I am Mimi Hijab who have boys around him? What if you are a bunch of boys? Those here, they are equal to, uh, equal to me, even better than me. And some of them, they are so wonderful to the point. I will be happy to wash your feet as the my Lord, the Messiah, he washed the feet. I am not better than the Messiah. So shame on you to insult those Christians who they are being nice to you, you idiot coward. I will be happy to wash their feet. We are, we are not like you. So you can insult us, call us, we give it to your boy. Who is my boy? Who is my boy? I wish I can have all those people here. I will make them coffee and tea and we will have fun and I will serve them with, from my heart. What boy, you coward? We don't have boys here. This is in heaven, in your heaven. Isn't it your God, Allah, he promised you that in heaven you will have boys and they are 80,000 little boy and they will be white like pros? Hmm? And you are talking about boys? Is that your Quran or this is the book of a Christian prince? And why they have to be so pretty and why they have to be white? Because those Arab, they hate any color except white. This is why Muhammad, he promised them women, they are so white to the point you will see the marrow of their bones. Right? Anyway, see guys, always, always you have to be ready and you have to be vigilant and you need to learn how to get them busted. Use their own statement to get them busted. This is what the Muslims they do. They throw rocks at me. Then I collect the rock. I make it big. <laughs> you know, once I, I, uh, I visited a friend who just, he bought a house. But his house is not ready, you know, he didn't have, like, he could not, I mean, they can finish it to the end, but he didn't have enough money, so he told them, stop, I can't afford to do the grass outside. And, you know, so I came to him, he said, but look, we have a lot of rocks outside. And this is, will be really a lot of work. I said, no, it's really easy to clean it. He said, how? You want me to clean it? See, you want to see? He said, okay. Because when I came, I saw outside a bunch of kids playing outside. 
I told him, do you have an like an, an old uh, garbage can you don't need? He said, yeah. He said, okay, give it to me. I put it in the other side of the, you know, like there is an empty land. It's, an, it's a new area, you know, building houses. So I put it in the other side. And I said, who can hit that uh, garbage can? <laughs> and the kids, they came, they are so happy. And we started throwing rocks at the garbage can. The lot is empty from rocks in five minutes. Hmm. Very easy. The kids are happy. My friend is happy and I had fun. Everybody is happy. And this is what we do with the Muhammadan. We are happy, but sadly they are... Uh, uh, but many of them, they get happy at the end because they leave Islam. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> No, all of us, we are smart, but the problem is sometimes we need, you know, we don't listen to, you know, like we don't want to give it the offer to to think about it. I mean, if you have a problem, you have to think about how to solve it. And sometimes it's very easy just to think, you know, slow down and don't make the stress, you know, like make you feel down. Like this guy, my friend, he was, he felt he's stressed. Too much things to need to do with work inside the house. You have too many rocks outside. You know, it's stress. Stress sometimes blind you. You have too much stress. Stress to pay your bills, stress with your family, your kids. Uh, maybe you are still this in a school. I mean, stress. Uh, our life is a is a is a continual stress stress of health so you need always to listen to yourself and try to figure out how I can use what I have for the benefit of me or somebody I care for as what happened with our friend here right <clears throat> Always when you have a problem, even if this is not our topic, we were talking about the 50 women. <clears throat> I mean, I wanna I wish I wish I, I wish I have a remote control to move in time so I can see the time when happen. I go in the street, I go in the street, I see no men, only women. Brother, that's astonishing. Hey Abdul, record me and say, Hey Christian Prince, do you see where Christian Prince you see the Christians? He said he liked to come and see time when there is nobody except women in the street. <laughs> I'm reading your hadith, you idiot. <coughs> hmm? uh, always. Always. We have to uh, uh, you know to to think about issues around us and we have to use the gift which God he gave us to solve problems but not necessarily our problem actually it's going to be very beautiful if you can help somebody because let us say you have maybe extra experience or maybe you are older uh, or maybe maybe you are smarter it's okay I mean you see being smarter doesn't mean that that one is a stupid it's just about ability of things. Maybe he is uh, gifted in different thing. Like me, if you give me a pen, says to me, uh, a draw an apple, the apple will look funny. I can prove it to you. Hold on, let me show. <laughs> so, but there is somebody else. He is very good in drawing. You know, let me draw for you an apple. All right. Oh. Uh, Okay, it's coming, it's coming. Here we go, almost uh, done. And uh, this is what will go along, really. Yeah, this is an apple in India, they call it elephant, just to let you know. <clears throat> wow. 
What you are doing? <laughs> this is how funny my drawing. Honestly, I I always get the worst grade in in art. I don't know how to draw. I have no idea. Just don't 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 ask me to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, they offer me to put my my. But you see, in the world today, if you see the art today, you will die laughing. You will see a stupid art. They call it art. I don't know how they call it art. They bring a cat, walk in the whatever paint, and then you know, and he put the brush here and there, and supposedly this is art, and they put it in the wall, and the guy says, "Wow, I can do better." You know. <laughs> Even Muhammad can do better. You might debate me about art, my friend. I will lose. I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, anyway, do we have any Muslim have any comment? Yeah, this paint I just draw. I will. I will sign a signature so you guys can buy it. <laughs> no, I'm not trying hard. Trust me, <laughs> I will. I will be the last one to try to draw because I know I know how gifted I am. <laughs> yeah, but but you see, that's what I'm saying. But there is somebody else. Maybe he have not not much knowledge, but when he hold the pen, he capture the image of a person as if it is real. Is that correct? That is a gift. So. Each one of us, he have a gift, but we need to discover our gift. The problem is, most of us, we do not know what our gift. You know, we spend years and years and years on what is my gift? I don't have any. There is no way. It's impossible. God, he gave you a gift. And you are the only one who can find it. And gift is not necessarily a skill of hands. Can be a skill of passionate, can be a skill of love, can be a skill of mercy, can be, you know, there's there is some people they volunteer to, to help old people who cannot even go to the bathroom. That is a gift because not everyone can do that. You know what I mean? Do you understand what I'm saying? This is an amazing gift. Maybe this woman she don't have education. Maybe she is she don't even know what uh, one plus one, but she have a gift, and the gift is amazing. She is helping a human being to survive. Many of us cannot handle it. Me myself, I will get sick of myself. <laughs> you know. So we have a gift and women they have their own gifts which sometimes is amazing you see I see that women are more gifted than men as an example you see a woman she have a child the guy he is going there having party he don't care the woman she is gifted she is gifted with love her heart he is in a place, her heart is there. Her love is there. That is a gift. Most of men, they don't care. You call him, you say, okay, so what happened to you? Okay, okay, no problem. You know, but the mother, she is different. That is a gift from God. So the gift is there. And we need to use them and one of the gifts we need to use very important is not to be deceived by using the brain which is a gift of God which God he gave us and this is why we are here today to read this is stupidity and get it busted so using the gift of God this is not my gift this is God gift to me to have a brain and the brain will help me to earn knowledge and knowledge is not a process of like, you know, remember Muhammad when he said that an angel, he came and he, he put a dish of faith and dish of wisdom. <laughs> Anyone remember the hadith? 
<laughs> Here he is. <laughs> so we don't believe in this garbage. What kind, what kind of religion? I mean, somebody want to tell me that there is a prophet who God installed wisdom and faith by dishes. I mean, this is this is a garbage. So the 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 knowledge. It's not what stupidity is like here. We see in the front of us that uh, you know angels came and he cut his heart and he took all the organ and he washed it in the water of Zamzam and then after that Jabril in charge of the surgery he he cut from his throat all the way to his uh, testicles and here it says the chest he took all the material he washed it and then he brought read carefully a gold tray containing a gold bowl full of belief and wisdom and he brought and then Gabriel stuffed his chest and the throat blood vessels with it do you see it so God gave me a gift and the gift is telling me that this is a stupid for a very simple reason this is not how knowledge neither faith can be given for neither knowledge or belief is something physical do we agree you do not need to be a genius. You do not need to have a PhD. You can be a farmer. And I love, by the way, uh, people in villages. They are beautiful. Very decent. Away from people who live in cities. But by looking at this, what is this? So are you saying to me, okay, now I don't have a degree in, let us say, mathematics. Are you saying to me, I can get a dish of mathematics and you cut my chest and you put the dish there and then I woke up in the morning with PhD in, the, in, in, in mathematics who, who in the world want to believe in such a madness you know what I mean how you can believe in this and look this is an authentic hadith this is Sahir Bukhari so they cannot play the game week and you know this garbage look at this garbage How in the world even the second Muhammad he said that is enough for me to know that this guy is a scam is not it imagine I come to you and I'm wearing nice clothing and suit and blah 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 okay and maybe I'm good-looking which I am not and uh, you know and I say to you I'm prophet of God and then I say to you do you know how God he made me prophet say okay Christian press uh, tell me how it's a brother and angel he come to me in the middle of the night and he cut my teeth and he installed a death of wisdom and death of faith and actually I saw with him a death of potatoes and I said to him I don't want potatoes in my teeth <laughs> what is this I mean give me a break how much I need to be stupid literally stupid to believe in such a stupidity and the funny the Muslim they say to us you know, if Allah wants something, he say B is going to be, right? Okay, why he did not say, hey, Muhammad, be smart? Because look, they are installing wisdom, which means Muhammad is stupid. Muhammad is stupid to the point he need a surgery. You see it? The surgery to install two things is missing. There's a problem. There's a defect. Wisdom and belief. And now Muhammad after the surgery is telling us the story this is story that's mean how stupid he is because this is a stupid story that's mean the surgery was horrible so how stupid muhammad was before the surgery to the point after the surgery is saying this do you know what i'm saying because now muhammad is saying this story after the surgery that this is after he became wise <laughs> So if this is what happened after he became wise, how stupid he was before he was before the surgery. There's something called before and after, right? Before and after. <laughs> this is after. This is the wise man after the surgery. If this is what my wise man say after a surgery of wisdom, how stupid he was before the surgery.
Now, guys, I made some videos and I post them in Patreon. Not many of you download the videos, right? Please don't forget to download because the Muslims will flag those videos. You know, videos which is really exposing the stupidity. Don't forget to download them, all right? Uh, now, and this video for sure, don't forget to download it. I will leave it there for, you know, a few hours. Why not in the brain? Good question, Vivi. You see, and the funny Muhammad, he said that women are stupid. Right? Muhammad, he said women all have a brain. Look what Vivi, she said. Why this installation did not happen in the brain? <laughs> well, that's a perfect question. Have you ever heard of a wisdom and in and, and his throat? And they clean his chest? And they took the organ out? What? Why? They, this is the engine? So, my friend, we have to be smart. And the devil is powerful, somehow is powerful, but somehow is so stupid. Muhammad and Islam can look like a very, like from, you know, they, they make uh, tons of videos, science and the Quran. Yeah, I can see the science. Science, brother, do you know the Quran speak about the concrete, really? The eyes? How the heart function, how the blood, I mean, the crazy stuff, lies. And this is why this cult is very dangerous, because the followers, they are willing to deceive, not to tell you the truth. And that's why I'm here. You see, if most of them, they say this is about Islam, I will not be here, trust me. Because you do not need me, the Muslim will tell you. This is what Islam teach. And because now Islam is weak, so Islam is like a snake, flexible, change its skin. So when Islam was strong, they have an army, the caliphate like ISIS, you know, then who uh, who dare to question, who dare to ask? You say jihad, they say jihad. Yes, we do jihad. Killing the Christian, yes, yes, we will kill the Christians. They are not willing to negotiate and they are not willing to say it's not true. Because at that moment, Islam was not in the stage of weakness. You know what I mean? And because now, Islam in the stage of weakness, we change the skin. We say, uh, Islam is peace. Uh, you know, we believe in women's rights. Islam gave women rights. Uh, we respect uh, Christians and Jews and atheists. Uh, Islam promote equality. I mean, there's millions of articles about that. And even some of them written even not by Muslims. Muslims, they will hire newspapers, journalists. They spend a lot of money for this agenda to promote Islam. There is a, there is a YouTube channel, you know, they bring you a person who is not a Muslim. They're called Ernest Stein, something like this. And they speak, they bring someone he claimed to be Christian, someone he claimed to be none, uh, someone he claimed, and they say Islam is wonderful. But I mean, why somebody is a Christian, he will do that? Because those are fake. And they are sold to the devil. The same as the one who sold Jesus for a few pieces of silver. Right? Remember, those who betrayed Jesus exist since the time of Jesus. Do you understand me? So don't be surprised if you see someone he claimed to be Christian, but he defend Islam. Is that correct? Is it true that there is somebody who is a disciple of Jesus? He sold Jesus for a few coins of silver. Those people, they are always exist. They will sell Jesus, they will sell themselves to the devil. They are for sale. As simple as that. I want to say thank you guys for being here. You see, I said I will be here for 15 minutes. You're right. Yeah, right. 15 Christian Prince will stay 15 minutes. All right. <clears throat> أشكال تعبانة أمرهم ما كانوا مسيحيين 
يا راجل نو no بروبلم كانوا ما كانوش حيروحوا جنة محمد والحريم حتستناهم بالهبل يا راجل أحكيك صعيدي زي الصعيد I'm speaking Egyptian now <تصفيق> All right. Uh, <تصفيق> you see, uh, uh, Egyptian people, by the way, they are very. Uh, if you uh, if you sit with them, they are very fun. Don't don't look at those trashy people you see. You know, and you know, no, the Egyptian people are really fun people. They are. They have a very nice sense of humor. And you know, for me, my experiences with the Christian Coptic, those are the real Egyptian, not someone is not. Those are the real Egyptian. They have a very nice sense of humor, and like you know, I don't know, they create fun in any way. Like the second they speak, and they are very, uh, let us say, uh, the, the their language skills, not Arabic. It's an Egyptian style. And in the same time, they are really gifted in the way they think fast, and that thinking uh, is is always uh, pointed at the sense of a humor. So they make a they make a joke out of nothing, you know, out of nothing, and they are very uh, uh, very nice people. And for sure, there's bad people everywhere. I mean, there's bad, good, everywhere. So don't say that Christian prince, he says Egyptian, all of them, they are nice. I'm not saying that. I'm saying there is wonderful people in Egypt and there is bad people in Egypt. But this is the case everywhere. No exception. Have you ever heard of a country don't have bad and criminals and drugs and, you know, this over USA, America, you know, wherever you go. Uh, there is garbage. There is, there is good, right? And always, always, you know, uh, associate yourself with the good fruits because our one rotten fruit can what? Can damage the whole box. You know what I mean? Be careful about you associate yourself with who? Like there's people that say I'm open-minded to be with any. So I, okay, what open? I don't know what this open-minded means today. It's weird. But uh, I associate myself with anyone is good. He is African. He is white. He is Asian. Who care? They are. They are. They are. They are human like me, and I love them all. But I have one condition: that if I associate myself with them, they will make a better person of me, not a worse. Very simple. You know what I mean? Very, very simple. Uh, somebody saying Joanna saying with uh, with Surin. Well, the same. I mean, uh, they are educated. They are, uh, you know, uh, you know, many of them. They are already smart because you know this country have an old civilization, the same as Egypt. Uh, uh, but there is a lot of uh, hypocrisy. A lot of, uh, but I mean, uh, this is the case everywhere these days. <clears throat> And nothing changed. A human being is a human being, regardless of his nationality or his uh, uh, ethnic group. Uh, a human being can be good, can be bad. Nothing really special, right? Uh, always choose your family, not from a person who, because he, you call him a brother from your mother and your dad. I have a big family. Look at you. If, if, we, if we look at the faces they are in this place here, we have people like here. We have our brother here, Light from Egypt, right? So we have people from Egypt, we have people from Indonesia, we have people from uh, Philippines, we have people from USA, Europe. I mean, your your brother is the one who is good to you. Never go by a brother of a blood. Trust me. Actually, in most cases, and maybe you agree with me or not, your family is the first to hurt you. They are the first to hurt you. Because what happened... If you have a family, let us say a cousin or etc., you trust this person because he's a family, right? And then this person, he stab you easy because he's a family. He can, you trust him, you turn your back to him. So you can get hurt by family more than you can get hurt by a stranger. Because a stranger, you are aware and you are, let us say, vigilant. But the family, he can stab you easy. So choose your brother 
of someone, he is not necessarily from your mother and your dad. His someone is good to you. Someone when you need him, he is there for you. That is a brother and that is a sister. Those are real. Because it's not the blood forcing them to be there. Because tradition and family, you know, so I have to, he's my brother. So it's like an, a duty I'm born with, but it's not really what I want maybe. But the one who volunteered to be there for you, this is a real person. Right? There is people, they are born with us, but we did not choose them. I did not choose a brother or sister. They did not choose me too. But there's people, they choose you and you choose them. And that is more beautiful. So always try, try your best to build a family. But this family is not necessarily a family which is you are born with. And your family, and if your family is good to you, you know, for sure, be good to them always, you know, why not? But don't be limited in something called born of a same father or mother, right? Yeah, and anyway, you know, uh, the Lord, he said, from their fruits, you shall know them, right? So this is our family. We, we found a label, a label, right? How I can find my family? The fruit. If my fruit is the same as their fruit, obviously, if we are from the same tree. Correct? Very, very simple. Now, I don't want to make it complicated and don't think, uh, uh, Muhammad, and he hear me now, he says, a Christian prince, he's saying, don't uh, be good to your family. Absolutely not. Actually, the Bible, he, the Bible insists to be good to your family. Especially your parents. Thank you, Lai. Thank you. A a anyway, uh, the secret of uh, success with people is to be a sensitive person. And when I say sensitive, sensitive, think about them when you ask them for things or you need something. Don't just think about your needs. I advise you always to be. A person who do that let us say I need something from you the first question before I ask you even though this is my need I will ask myself if I ask him or her the request is that a good request for her or for him or it's a bad is it going to hurt the person is it going to harm the person or it will not do any bad to him anyway so always not to be, don't think about what you need right away and ask for it. Before you do that step, think. Before you ask the person, I need this from you, ask yourself, is that a good request to ask for? Don't be selfish. One of the things which destroy us is being selfish. Because selfish person, he don't, he don't see people around him, he see himself. You know, people around him, they are just numbers. They don't mean anything. Selfishness is the enemy. This is why Christ, one of the things I love about the Messiah, he has zero selfishness. Zero. In every way, every mean, even he is who he is. Imagine, he is the Messiah. Imagine if I have the power of the Messiah to, just to make people see. Not, not, you know, there's blind, how many million blind there is in the earth? Millions. Imagine I have such a power. I will be very selfish. Because that will make me feel like, wow, look what I can do. People come into my door, begging for mercy, begging for help. Let me see a, a blind man. Do you know what it means to a blind man to see? I mean, this is a priceless. This person, he never saw what color means. He cannot either, he don't know what, you, they say sky, what is a sky? They say tree, okay, what is a tree? They say green, they say red, he did not know them. So if you have such a simple power of the Messiah, imagine how much you can gain. But the Messiah, he never do such a thing. Never.
He never think about his gain. He think always about our gain. We are the winners. So anyway, I want to say thank you for being here. Don't forget, please to download the video. And uh, I'm feeling sorry for the Mohammedan who believe in Muhammad, who said that in the judgment day, Allah, he will make the Muslims who wear silk. Uh, he will make them, uh, according to the hadith in the front of us, uh, he will make them, sadly, pigs and monkeys, which is not really, not a good thing from Allah to do. You know? And there is a hadith, by the way, uh, where Muhammad, he said that the one who died for the sake of Allah doing jihad, Allah will make him a green bird. You know that, right? I spoke about it before. So imagine Osama bin Laden, he go to heaven, they deliver him the 1,000 million uh, version, but he's a bird now. What he would do with them? He would use his beak? You die for Allah. You fight for Allah. He promised you a version. You go to heaven, you find yourself a chicken. I mean, this is really weird. Yeah, yeah, it's a green bird. Maybe, maybe remind me later. We can, you know, we can speak, <laughs> speak about this madness. You know, I'm so glad he did not end as a rabbit, a green rabbit. That would be uh, uh, funny. <laughs> anyway, may the Lord bless you all. And uh, I said to myself when I hang up two hours ago, I'm not going to go live. My throat is hurting me. I need a break. And here we go. I'm here back because a Muslim he made he said he said a comment, so I could not resist. So I pray I will be able to resist so my throat can really take a break. It's hurting. Thank you guys for being here. May the Lord <coughs> bless you. And remember always, it's not Christian Prince who give you confidence of your face, it's the Messiah. I am here just to share little knowledge of, of what I have. Again, such a stupid cult, it's very easy to understand. It's a stupid. So just share, please. Share what you learn from here. Share those references, those hadith, those stories. So people who think Islam is a great thing, they will see it's a stupid. Don't be selfish. Don't just come here to have fun and laugh and etc. This is funny. This is stupid. This is not the purpose of us to be here. We need people who help us because the mission is big. Islam is a big balloon. But we need your needle. You see, it's just a needle will make the balloon go boof, nothing. But if nobody want to use the needle, the balloon will stay there. So each one of you, he see a balloon, it's called Islam, use your needle, use your knowledge. That is your needle. Boof, Islam is gone. Thank you very much for being here. I'm not going to bother you with the music. And uh, remember to subscribe if you are new in uh, uh, our channel. And you can subscribe to other channels, which we have too. And if you have an Instagram, don't forget to join us there. This is my Instagram, Arabian Prophet. And we have a page, it's called Minds.com, where I have a page there. <coughs> uh, this is like, uh, let's say, it's a backup in case we lose our channels because they flag us. And, you know, they are crazy of what I do. So always you have to be ready for whatever can come. Thank you guys for being here. May the Lord bless you. And this is a Christ, Christian Prince. Love you all. Take care. Bye-bye.